For those of you who may be new, I am Kelsey Murrow. Hello. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a student engagement coordinator. I represent the South campuses, so that would be the Regina campus and the Moose Jaw campus. I'm not on the Moose Jaw campus nearly as much as I wish I was, I wish I could be, but I'm still around, especially during orientations and such. So during all the fun stuff, you'll definitely see me there. Um, and if you can't see me, you can probably hear me because my voice carries and I have a pretty distinctive voice, I like to think. So usually people find me, you know, who may have been in another virtual orientation session of mine, people would be like, wait, I remember you because I, re I remember your voice. So that's always what I get. So um, Amanda is who was here this morning. She is not here right now, but she is our other self coordinator for student engagement. So she runs all the orientations and such on the Regina campus. So you will definitely see her if you attend that campus um, in the north. So if you attend the Saskatoon or Prince Albert campus, we have Lisa DeVries and Leanne Barrington. Leanne will be uh, moderating the chat today. So any questions that we aren't able to maybe get to immediately, she will uh, try and answer those to the best of her knowledge, depending on the question. And uh, we'll do our other introductions as we, as we go, okay? So this is the academic success session. So I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, but if we're not sure, well, you'll be sure by the end of this. Let's just, let's just go with that. Okay. So I know, sorry, you see like how the sausage is made, you know, not great. Okay, so I'm gonna, oh yeah. I forgot about my other screen. So you'd think I've never done this before. Let me try again. Uh, here we go. So once again, welcome. I know a lot of you are not actually here yet, but still welcome nonetheless. Again, this is our academic success section, which um, I think all sections, of course, are important, but I think this one is especially important because I think a lot of students, even still, even after all the things we try and do to prep, don't realize that all of these things are available to you because, you know, that the old saying, work smarter, not harder, that is kind of the theme of this entire uh, session is there are lots of resources at your disposal for free that are paid for through your tuition that will help your academic studies be easier. So you might as well utilize them and you'll learn how throughout the session by the end, you'll be an absolute pro, okay? So a couple housekeeping things that I know we've sort of gone over before, but uh, make sure to use that chat function. It's a great tool um, and it does help kind of avoid people talking over each other and such. Though, considering we have not a ton of people, really not the end of the world if some of you end up, you know, speaking out loud if you have questions. So, oh, live transcription. Thanks, Heather. Um, Heather's so good with this stuff. This is how you'll know. She's so good with tech. Um, but yeah, so use that chat function. But uh, while you're not actively talking, of course, please make sure you're muted. You don't need to hear a bunch of noises in the background. Make sure that you are never recording a meeting without everyone's consent. So this is where I'll tell you now that this, re this meeting is being recorded as we speak. If you have your video off, you won't even, you won't even show up in the recording, so don't worry about it, but still got to let you all know. Um, if for any reason, like my video is starting to cut out or something, sometimes it helps if everyone turns their video off, but that's not really going to be an issue here. So we can kind of disregard that. Okay. So of course we will do our land acknowledgement. So as we did this morning, we will I will explain why we do this, but I will give the acknowledgement first. So we would like to acknowledge that SAS Polytech is situated on Treaty 4 and Treaty 6 territories, in the ancestral lands of the Cree, Soto, Diné, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota peoples and the traditional homeland of the Métis. So quickly, just before I forget, I'm going to put this link in the chat because I really recommend uh, visiting this website when you get the chance kind of reading up on why we do this and why it's so important. So um, a land acknowledgement kind of helps, it helps us, it helps us acknowledge that the land that we are currently on has a lot of history before us, before us coming and settling here. Um, indigenous peoples of what's now called Canada 
have been here for much, much, much longer than all of us. There is an ongoing complicated relationship when it comes to colonialism, our place here, our relationships with this land versus indigenous relationships with this land. I am lucky to be able to work here, to live here, to play here. And um, it's just really important to always understand where we are, why we're here, and our role in this kind of ongoing issue of colonialism. We all play a part, and it's just good to be knowledgeable of what this is all about. So definitely recommend reading up on that when you get the chance, okay? Oops, sorry. Okay, so who do we have on the docket today? Um, well, we have me just moderating, but I'm not doing any Q&As today other than maybe the little things that we ask in the chat. But with our the library, we have Nina Vereshagen. With Learning Services, we have Heather Tway. If you're wondering how to pronounce that, Tway, like T-W-A-Y, Tway. Um, with Accessibility, I don't know if she is here yet, but that is Amy, and that is okay. We will, we will get there. And um, with SPSA, or the Student Association, we have Laura. So if you were here this morning, you met Louie with the SPSA. Laura is in a different part of the SPSA, which she will explain. So if you're like, wait a minute, there was someone from the SPSA earlier, this is why. Okay, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's give the mic to Miss Nina. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. So hello, everybody. My name is Nina. I'm a librarian. I am coming to you from Treaty 6 territory uh, in Saskatoon, from our Saskatoon campus. So any of you who land there, I'll be excited to see you. Um, I just noticed one of my librarian colleagues came in. Her name is Miranda, and she's at our Moose Jaw campus. So if any of you are at Moose Jaw, Miranda's here and Feel free, Miranda, to interrupt me at any time or, or you know, correct anything that I do that is wrong. So I am going to go through the four questions here um, and give you some information. I actually have links to attach for each question that is here, mostly because there's, you know, a really common theme with the library website is that there's a lot of stuff there. And I don't want to overwhelm you with all of the stuff there. So I'm going to do my best to keep it simple and just tell you the important things that you need to know um, and then encourage you to visit those sites afterwards. I always do a shameless plug for our social media platforms, though, to begin. And so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put them into the chat. If you guys are Instagram users or Facebook users, we have very active accounts and I like to call them the place where all the student supports come together. We post about learning services stuff. We post about career services. Um, we have a very close relationship with Kelsey, who does the SAS Polytech students site or as social media. Um, and that's where you're going to find out things that are going on in the library. So sometimes we have therapy dogs come and visit. Um, in Canada, I don't know if this is true for, you know, internationally, but we have found that petting a dog or interacting with a dog helps you feel better. And so we invite dogs to come into our space so that students can interact with them, pet them, hang out. Um, and we also do things like we give away free coffee and stuff like that. So definitely follow us if you're interested in those things. So first question, what does the library staff help with? We help with a lot of things. So as promised, here is your first link. It's a little awkward because I have bullet points in my document, so I have to correct it every single time I put it in. Um, what do we help with? So we have lots of different staff in the library. We assist with research and questions that student might have, students might have for their assignment help. So if you have, especially if you have like a history paper or an assignment that requires you to find resources outside of your textbook or your course, library people are your number one go-to. We can help you find resources that are good, reliable sources of information that your instructors aren't going to question you on why you are using them. Um, and basically to avoid just doing, you know, random web searching and finding websites to put into your assignments. Um, you guys can chat with me and chat about this or give me a thumbs up, but has anybody ever 
heard of like misinformation or disinformation or fake news or anything like that? Is that something common? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my point in asking that question is uh, the library staff, we're here to help you avoid all of that kind of stuff. Yes, thanks to Trump. Yeah, totally. Um, so we're here to help you avoid all that stuff, avoid pretty much all the junk online. Um, and maybe sometimes it is to help you find good information online. That is something that we do as well. Clickbait. Yes, love that. Um, but that's kind of what we're professionals at. We are also professionals at citations, research, um, academic integrity, all of that kind of stuff. So come and visit us at any time. Um, we have a really good physical space that you can come and visit us at and we'll help you. And we have a really good virtual space as well on the library website. If someone wants to pop in the library website uh, URL, that would be awesome. And Learning Services, who you're going to hear from next, I think, they are located at every campus except for Moose Jaw. You're going to hear us say that a lot, unfortunately. They are located in the library. So it's really awesome. You can come in, get some help from a librarian um, for your research, and then you can walk over to Learning Services, get some help writing your paragraph or your thesis statement or whatever, and then you can come back to us and we'll help you. It's just a really uh really friendly area you know what though there's lots of great stuff about moose jaw that we don't have at the other campuses so i'm going to get one of my moose jaw colleagues to talk about that at some point <laughs> all right so learning services is here they're also located if you did open our website they are also located on our website so in the online space um we also in the library are going to help you with locating and checking out free materials free for you to use and I think that is it for the answer to that question. Well, I guess I'll say to you, for a lot of you, you're going to have assignments that require you to use a citation or a reference format. Now, I don't want to get too detailed about this. I don't want you to get confused because there, it's a lot. But you may be asked to follow the rules called APA style. And in which case you can come and we are pros at that and we work with learning services to help with that. In these circumstances, you can book an appointment with a librarian or a learning services person, or you can go onto our website and just chat with someone to get really quick answers to questions. So these are really great services that students use quite a lot. Um, so we think that they find us helpful. So we hope that you will use them. Okay, I'm going to pause in between my questions so that everybody can think as I talk really fast and I'm going to put my next link in. So this one is related to what are the library hours and where would I want to go there? So I'll just kind of tell you the library hours, even though you can click on that link and take a look. Um, our campus libraries are open Monday to Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. I always like to highlight to students that we are open in the evenings, Monday to Thursday. So if you want to come use our space, use our computers, um, find sort of like a calmer place to study, you can come here. Friday, we're open eight to six. And on the weekends, the larger campuses are open 12 to 6 p.m. And the smaller campuses, that would be Prince Albert and Moose Jaw, they are open one to 6 p.m. Our Ask Us Live chat service runs Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, 12 to 6. So we have a lot of, you know, times that are offered to provide you with support. Why would you visit us? Well, we, if we're talking about the physical space, we have group study rooms. So if you have an assignment that you're doing with your classmates, you want a place, you know, to meet um, and use like whiteboards to write stuff down and, you know, just congregate and get, get your work done, come and use those everywhere about Moosta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have computers that are free for everybody to use anytime. We have pods. I might get someone from Learning Services to talk a little bit more about the pods. I don't know them that well, but they're cool things that you can use. And we have a lot of really helpful staff. Again, pausing between questions, grabbing a link, formatting my link. There we go. So can you print, scan, or photocopy in the library? 
the answer is yes. This is probably one of our most commonly most used services um, outside of, you know, asking our amazing staff questions about references and stuff like that. To print at the library, you're going to be automatically set up with something called a paper cut account as soon as you become a student. The page that I just sent you the link to, I was going to try to explain it and then I gave up because it's a lot of just like log into my SAS Polytech, click here, do this, do that. So just make sure that you save that link somewhere or visit the library website and chat with us. Say, I forget, I don't remember how I'm supposed to print or how that works and we will answer your question. Um, but just so you know, students are always asking how much does it cost? 10 cents a page per side, black and white, and 25 cents a page per side color. All of the campuses use a virtual printing service, which basically means you can send a print job from any computer on campus, and it's gonna show up on one of our many printers. And it's actually really easy to use, um, really swift. And you can also purchase a printer fob, it's like a little purple print fob. I've got one right here Ooh. at the bookstore for $2. Um, they're really great because they have all your login information already put already in them. So you don't have to type in your information every time you go to a printer. Um, so that's a really good option if you want to do that. Definitely check out, out of all the links I sent, that might be one of the most useful ones because it's going to give you all of that, you know, detailed information that you might be curious about. Scanning is free. So if you do need to scan anything for any reason, you can do that for free in the library. Pausing between questions and formatting. There we go. All right, so how do I borrow an item from the library? Um, library materials are free to borrow if you are a student and they're not all academic. So basically what you do is you can come into the library, you can browse our shelves for books or you know, whatever else we may have. Kind of, it's kind of different depending on which library location you are in. Like some of our libraries have children's books, for instance, that you can borrow if you're a parent, um, and some do not. So you'll just have to see what location you're at and what we have. Um, you're going to come to the front desk with your item, and you are going to show a piece of ID to our staff, and you can borrow it. Uh, you can borrow lots and lots of items. Usually it's for about three weeks. You can easily renew things through our website, so don't worry, don't stress about it. Um, I did say we that not everything is academic. I think that's important. We have lots of books that you can just read, you know, for happiness, joy, whatever. Anybody who's a reader, come and check out our, our stuff that is kind of fun to read. And we also, through our library website, we have lots of free digital services that you can use. So we have an audiobook website that you can use to listen to audiobooks. We have a streaming uh, video website. Um, we have a lot of really great Canadian content. Uh, when Kelsey was doing the um, land acknowledgement, I was thinking about that. We have some really great sites that will tell you about, you know, the history of Canada and, you know, reasons why, you know, we always talk about treaties and we acknowledge that kind of stuff. So these are really great resources to check out on the library website, which we sent you a link to. If all else fails, if you forget absolutely everything that I've said, you are always welcome to walk through our doors. We will help you or to send us a chat uh, question. And again, we will help you. We have lots of great, helpful staff available during the times that I outlined earlier. Another one all. I want to mention, actually, with things you can borrow from the library. Hi, I'm Miranda. I'm one of the Moose Jaw librarians. So all that except Moose Jaw, I felt dearly, but it's OK. We get it. I know Moosha has it. I'm not entirely certain all the other campuses do, but you can also borrow, borrow phone chargers from the library. Right. So if your phone's dead and you're on campus and forgot your charger, pop up to the library. We've got the wall ports and the chargers. Awesome. I totally forgot about that. We didn't have that at the U of R, at least not that I knew of, so. <laughs> that one caught somebody's attention. <laughs> Uh, they, we didn't have smartphones when I was in university, so this is like a whole new world. Nina, you are younger than you seem to give yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. I'm not kidding. Are we starting the back in my day conversation? <laughs> yes, we are. 
All right, that's all I have to say. Uh, please feel free to throw any questions in the chat. I will be here the whole time. I can answer them at any time. I think I'm passing it off to Heather, who's... Yeah, before we move on to Heather, though, I always like to give my little feedback of like experience and whatever else. So, of course, the entire purpose of this uh, this session is academic success. All of all of these all of these different departments work, you know, holistically, right? So what I really want to add is that the library is like not only is it just a great place to go, but I really, 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 really encourage, and I'm going to say this a million times, using these services because something that uh, happens often, unfortunately, whether it's intentional or not, um, you know, is lack of proper research or things like that with essays that you might write. And I think a lot of us think, okay, well, you know, I don't know what to do, but the library is there. I mean, everyone, everyone here can assist with things like this, but especially the library, that is what they specialize in is research, research, citation, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, if anything were to happen, I feel like especially those of you who are in these sessions, there's sort of no excuse now. You know all these different resources that you have, especially the library. Even if you can't make an appointment, you just ask someone. So if you're ever not sure about research or anything like that, and again, I know it sounds quite, maybe it sounds obvious, but please, please, please utilize these resources that you have for free, please. I think that's a really good thing to point out, Kelsey, because I think a lot of us, I know a lot of my colleagues here like didn't use services when we were going through university and we thought, wow, wouldn't my life have been easier? And I also noticed with students that those who like if you kind of if you kind of give it that first try and you come and see us, those are the ones who come over and over and over again. Um, so just come and see us once and we'll make you return again. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure Heather can attest to that as well. The amount of librarians, I like to say I have my, I have like my arsenal of librarians that I will ask questions about with citation or whatever else. And I feel like I'm, I'm pretty confident with citation, but no, I need my librarians. I always have them there to help me out. I'm always Zoom chatting them at random times. So um, they're just, yes, utilize them. They're wonderful. Don't take them for granted, but you know, <laughs> use their services. Okay. Thank you so much, Nina. And again, as she said before, if anyone has other questions to add in the chat, uh, Nina will definitely be able to answer those. All right. So next on the list here, we got, as Nina said before, we got Heather. Take it away, Heather. Yeah. So hello, I'm Heather Tway. I'm here on Treaty Port Territory, also known as Regina, Saskatchewan. So some of you might be coming to Regina, kind of the other big city in Saskatchewan. Uh, so if you're in Regina, you might see me. And as Nina said, in Regina, I am in the library. Uh, I will say though, even though Moose Jaw, they're slightly scattered, but if you find the library or learning services and you're just like, I'm looking for the other, we will literally walk you there, okay? Uh, the first time, then you'll be fine. But it's, uh, I mean, Moose Jaw campus is lovely. It's just 17 buildings stuck together. So it takes a little bit to get used to it. Uh, but Regina, we're very close. I could touch a librarian right now, practically. Uh, okay, so learning services, who are we, kind of what we do. Uh, we offer academic support, period. So that means we help you out with any and all of your courses. Uh, it doesn't matter what the subject matter of that course is, we have someone who can help you out with that. Uh, we also do a lot of help with like study skills. So if you are new to post-secondary or maybe you've done university, but now you're coming back, uh, SAS Polytech and Polytechnics in general are quite different than like a regular even university experience or a high school experience. Uh, it tends to just be, not that the information is like a lot harder, there's just so much more of it. So what we often see is students come in and they're like, I was a really good student in high school, this is gonna be fine. And then just, they are, they're more than capable, but it just kind of adds up. Uh, so what we do recommend is if you're, especially if you're at all kind of anxious about starting here, you're just not sure, um, you know, about what to expect, make an appointment with us in learning services early. Okay? I mean, you can even make one in December if you want. We do online or in-person appointments. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can make a Zoom, Zoom appointment with us and we'll help you out. And we can kind of give you some hints 
at the start of the year that'll like make the rest of your term go better. I mean, I still expect, and we still do see students who, you know, maybe don't do great on the first midterm, and then we see a bunch of students, and that's fine too. We will help you at any point in the semester, but kind of the earlier you can come see us, the better for you. Uh, so my questions are just a lot of uh, really common questions and things I hear from students. Uh, so the first one is you come and you have to write a research paper. So how do I write a research paper? What do they mean by citation or referencing my sources? So Nina kind of touched on this a little bit. That's that APA element. So for this one, it's a perfect example of how we work with the library really closely. Uh, you'll probably get um, like some in-class support for how to do this okay, for most programs, but you can come to learning services and we'll help you out. But often we'll kind of tag team with the library. So we might teach you about like how to outline a paper. They might teach you how to find some sources. They might send them back once you found a source and we'll talk about integrating quotations. And then we might send you back to them for referencing. So we do work together hand in hand really often. Okay. Uh, and we just wanna make sure you're successful and you are um, upholding like academic integrity. So that means you are citing your sources, giving credit where credit's due, et cetera. And again, if you're nervous about any of that and you're just like, oh God, am I plagiarizing? What is plagiarizing? Just come see us, okay? We're, we're not judging you. We're not marking our papers. We will let you know uh, and we'll help you out with it, okay? So no judgment in learning services. Uh, another common thing, students come in, you'll buy your textbook. They are alarmingly large. So a lot of questions we get like, how am I supposed to read my whole textbook? Or they start out well and they're reading, you know, 40 pages a night and pretty soon it's just stacking up and they're falling behind. Come see us. You should not read a textbook like you're reading a novel. You do not start at page one and go page two, three. That is absolutely how you should not read a textbook. Right? So come see us, make an appointment and uh, we will teach you how to read a textbook efficiently to best use your time so you don't get too stressed out. Another example of support we offer is math skills. So often we get students who maybe haven't taken math in a long time and they have uh, a math course in the program, they might be a little bit nervous. Again, you can come in ahead of time, make an appointment even now in December, just be like, can you remind me some like kind of math basics? I'm taking like math 139 in the fall. I'm just a little worried about it. Uh, we can definitely help you out with that. And okay, we have a lot of math instructors as well. Same with the sciences. If you're taking chemistry for the first time in quite a few years, we can also help you out with basic chemistry. I can't because I don't remember anything about chemistry. Uh, I purposely shoved it from my mind, but we have lots of really great people who do. I'll show you how to find those people shortly. Okay, another question. If you have Zoom classes, uh, where do I find my link? Okay, your instructor will email it to you okay, or they will let you know where to find it. If you are taking a course that is even part online, uh, they tend to be set up in different ways, but that's always what we're going to kind of tell you, like, will they be recorded? Do I need to show up when they're scheduled? That is, we're basically going to say, talk to your instructor. Okay? And instructors, generally, if you have questions, are the place to start with. It's if you still, you know, need more help or unsure about stuff, that's when, like, coming to us can be good. Okay, that's a lot. Ooh, that's a good question. Microsoft Teams. You do have access to Microsoft Teams. We never use it for group meetings because, uh, to be honest, Zoom is better. Um, that's a personal judgment, and I will stand by it, having used both. Uh, so, oh, thanks, Kelsey. Um, so, yeah, we for classes, we always use Zoom, um, though we do, like I said, have Teams. But I think if you haven't used Zoom before, you will warm up to it right away because it's great. And you also have access to a professional Zoom account. So that means you get extra um, extra kind of uh, perks and kind of benefits using that account rather than just using like the free Zoom account that you might currently have. And also tell you, you know, where you can learn more about that. Uh, all right. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> 
MS Tools, you sure do. You have access to all the Microsoft Office 65 Pro 365 products. And you can also download the versions onto your personal um, computer. You can actually download it onto five different um, devices. So you can download it onto your computer, your phone, tablet if you have, um, again, up to five. And that's for PC and Mac. So you do have free access to those uh, and the full programs as long as you are a student here. They kind of poof and disappear off your computer once you graduate. Okay. Grammarly. Okay, so we do you do not have Grammarly. Uh, I mean, you can, you know, use free Grammarly if you like. Uh, the school does not provide that. Um, if learning services were kind of your Grammarly. We can help you out with your writing and that kind of thing. Digital textbooks really does vary by program. Uh, if you are doing like an online program, your textbooks should be available digitally. Uh, in person, you might have an option of like a physical textbook or digital textbook. Um, and the bookstore is kind of the, the good answer of where to find out more about textbooks. So not the library. They can help you with a lot of stuff, but they cannot sell you textbooks. So the bookstore or the SPSA also sells used books on most campuses if you're in Saskatchewan on a campus. Uh, where else am I? Okay, great questions, Reshma. Anything else? Or anyone else have questions? I'll pause. In the meantime, if we're still waiting for questions, Heather, do you want to quickly plug your getting started online? I totally was going to do that. Yes. You already were. Of course you No, were. no, no, no. no. Oh, no, I, I before I move on to the next one. Okay, so what I just talked about, so accessing Microsoft tools um, and the other question about um, Teams and Zoom, I actually do a uh, session. Oh, in this session, you can come off mute if you want, absolutely, uh, or through chat, whatever works for you. But while- Great, thank you. <laughs> it's hard to chat. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm just going to share a link. Did you want to um, ask a question, Reshma? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, for now I'm good. Thanks for answering all the questions. You're very welcome. Uh, so I just shared a link in the chat. This is to our learning services um kind of external page but the one thing I like about this is it has all our events on it so um if you scroll down you will see that there's upcoming events called getting started online and in those sessions they're online over zoom um they're being held in January uh either at 4 30 p.m central standard time or uh 12 30 p.m or no right at 12 12 p.m. Sorry, uh, kind of at the start of January, and Kelsey's showing them right now. Thank you, Kelsey. And I go through a lot of these like online tools that you're using, so like kind of where to find things, how to use them, just kind of touch on a lot of basics. Um, so it's a good thing at the start of your program if you're just like a little unsure about stuff, you want to learn some more uh, efficient ways to use these tools. It's um, a good thing to sign up for. And it's free and there's, I think, five different times. It's all the same one. So you just need to sign up for one of them. All right. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Okay. I always do. I feel that. like I'm going over time. It's on it. Well, um, so we maybe instead of. So we actually. Have a little bit more time so oh we do okay okay then i will uh i don't remember the rest of my questions mm -hmm. i can also just make kelsey I'll, go to I'll, the library I'll website there. and show you things from there i'll get there i just had to uh, it's all good sorry everyone okay here i wish <sighs> here we go all right okay uh, other questions I get, we're down to number five now. So what does an average day look like at SAS Polytech? Uh, class, you're in class a lot. 
Okay. Again, especially if you are, if you have done university before, you know you kind of have like a class, maybe two classes and a break, and maybe another class later, blah, blah, blah. Most SAS Polytech programs, your day is full of like six hours of class um, with a lunch break, sometimes coffee breaks, but you, you're in class a lot is kind of an average thing. Uh, and lastly, do I need textbooks? How do I know which ones, where I can buy them? Uh, yes, probably. I mean, it depends on your program, what you'll need for textbooks, but that bookstore link that Kelsey had put in the chat is where you can look up your program, get your book lists, um, and learn about which ones you need and uh, some options where you can buy them. Okay, so I think the last thing, if Kelsey's okay with sharing her screen, I'll just show you on um, the library, from the library page where you can find us at Learning Services. So we are that fourth little blue spot there. We're broken into writing, math, science, study skills, kind of depending on what you need. Really, if you go to any of them, you're gonna be able to find us and uh, yeah, let's go to writing just as an example um, and find out how to get a hold of us. So here are the very first box. This is again, the ways to contact us. We have make an appointment. So you can make your appointment online or in person. Uh, when you do click schedule an appointment, you'll see a list of all of us. And from here, just note right after our name is the campus location. Um, so you don't want to like make an appointment with Simon in Moose Jaw, but you live in Saskatoon if it's an in-person appointment. Uh, but we all do online appointments, so I mean, you can choose whoever you like from there, okay? Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, you can find out more information, like clicking a little blue eye, kind of what areas we're into, and it's just an online booking system. Ask for your SAS Polytech email, uh, and then you'll get a link to the Zoom room or uh, an office number. And yeah, that's booking an appointment. Next option, we also have a drop-in Zoom room. So this is open Monday to Thursday, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So open a little bit later than most of the rest of our services. And you can pop into that Zoom meeting and ask any sort of question you want. I mean, really it is for academic support, but if you're just like, I don't know about this, Try popping in here and we will do our best to answer it um, because we have great staff that are in there. So yeah, Monday, Thursday, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., Central Standard Time. Uh, next one is online writing support. So when you do start doing projects, research papers, if you want to get some feedback, but you don't have time to come for an appointment, you can send it in via email. So online writing support request form. Uh, It'll ask you to attach it, attach the assignment information. It will get sent to one of our instructors. They will give you feedback on a portion of your paper. So we don't um, do it for you. That's okay, Kelsey. Uh, but we'll give you feedback on part of your paper and email it back to you. So it's really handy again. If you just don't have time for an appointment, you can still get feedback. And very lastly, campus drop-in. This shows you our campus location um on each of our four main cities and you can pop in 9 a.m to 4 p.m and uh yeah just be like hey i need help and we will do our best to help you okay uh ooh, okay so two good questions in the chat so first one how many hours each day should students expect to be in the classroom or on zoom probably okay this will i can't speak to this certainly because it will depend on your program uh but often it's at least for programs in Regina, it's like a good six hours um, with usually an hour break for lunch. So it's usually kind of like three hour break and three more, sometimes three an hour break and like four more in the afternoon. Um, again, it does vary program by program. Not more than eight though, right? Not more than eight, okay. no. But it, it is a full day. Okay, you're very welcome. And then what percentage of plagiarism is allowed? Okay. No percentage of plagiarism is allowed. However, if you were speaking about like turn it in, which gives you a similarity percentage, I have no answer either because the number doesn't matter. So if you're just like not sure about all this kind of stuff, you're worried about plagiarism, first stop is to just come see us in learning services. 
and we can walk you through um, if you are using Turnitin for a program, uh, kind of what your Turnitin report actually tells you, uh, how to determine what it means, and help to make sure that you're not, you're doing zero plagiarism. So you are good in your um, writing with integrity. Okay. So come see us if you have questions about that. Okay, I don't know. Have I missed anything? I think I'm good. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, well, does anyone have less, less chance? Any questions? So you're not off the hook yet, Heather. <laughs> you might have more questions. That's true. I've been asking great questions. Mm -hmm. so I'm always happy to answer more. Okay, I'm going to go on right now. So if you do end up thinking of anything, throw it in the chat and Heather can definitely answer. I will definitely do that. We'll okay, def passing it back to you, Kelsey. Perfection. All right. So wonderful. Thanks, Heather. Goodness, that was that was so informative, which is, I guess, why you're here, but still. Um, okay, so there was um, our accessibility person. Uh, she is traveling right now. That's okay. So I'm not going to break down these questions because I don't feel that I can answer them confidently. But what I will do is put uh, the accessibility website or the, yeah, the accessibility website into the chat here where all of these things would be answered anyway. So I'm just going to throw that in and that's something you can visit on your own time. If you do have any direct questions about this, uh, I will include Amy's contact info in that email, that follow-up email that I'll be sending at the end of this. So just as a heads up, okay, if you want to visit that site, read all about accessibility services, it is available in the chat now. So we're just going to move straight on to Miss Laura with the SPSA. Take it away, Laura. Awesome. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Laura Leslie. I am the student advocate for the South with the SPSA. So that's the SAS Polytech Student Association. Um, we have two advocates. We have one in the North and one in the South. And so the North advocate is responsible for the Saskatoon and PA campuses, and the South is for Moose Jaw and Regina. And so I work mainly out of Regina, and then I'm in Moose Jaw um, weekly as well. So I am able to provide support for all students uh, on both campuses. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about the advocate, and then I'll go into some of the questions. Um, so the SPSA advocates are well-versed in SAS Polytech policies and procedures, um, uh, and due process and regulations. We are uh, available to assist, advise, and advocate on behalf of students um, who are facing any sort of academic challenges. And so if you find yourself in a position where you have been accused of, um, you've probably heard the word plagiarism, misrepresentation, any form of academic misconduct, um, you can seek out the advocate for support and uh, we can help sort of navigate uh, the situation with you if you would like. Uh, we can be involved as little or as much as you want us to be involved. So we can just have conversations sort of behind the scenes. We can explain policy, due process. We can explain the appeal processes or we can attend meetings uh, with students as well. Um, there are times when we do speak on behalf of students, but for the most part, we um, just are there to help support students in taking um, responsibility of their education and, and helping them in uh, those conversations. Um, we also aid in any dispute resolution. So if there's any uh, concerns you may have regarding any marks or um, any situations that have happened in your class due to academics, we can certainly help with that as well. Uh, we also do take um, concerns regarding uh, SAS Polytech faculty and instructors. And so I'll kind of get into that when we go into some of these uh, questions here. So I'll just start off with uh, the questions. So who should I talk to if I'm struggling in class? And so the first person to talk to is of course your instructor. Um, having some conversations with your instructor is, is definitely number one to kind of see what the next steps are. Uh, they will provide you with supports. And so again, all the people here today are people here that can help you when, with, when you're struggling academic um, with your academics. And so um, if you don't know who to contact, you can reach out to the advocate and we can certainly 
um, help you and refer you to the appropriate people and continue on with you throughout the process of that as well. Um, okay, what should I do if I receive academic misconduct? And so that would be plagiarism, cheating, misrepresentation, whatnot. So usually when students receive some form of academic misconduct, um, they violated, um, you know, some form of academic misconduct, they'll receive a sanction. And so that could be where you just receive a zero on the course, a zero um, on the paper assignment, whatever it may be, or you may be put on probation or students may be required to discontinue. And so each, um, each sanction sort of provides you with, with a new um, outcome. And so if you've been accused of academic misconduct, uh, the first thing is to have a meeting with your uh, whoever made the decision. So the instructor, the program head, understand what that um, what what that means, what you've been accused of. They'll explain to you the situation. If you feel as though you disagree, uh, or or you feel like maybe the situation was unjust, you can do an academic appeal. And so, or a great appeal, depending on what the situation was. If it's misconduct, it would usually be an academic appeal. And so we'll kind of then now go into the next question. Um, so how do I complete an academic appeal? So when you've been accused of academic, academic misconduct and you're feeling as though um, this didn't happen, you disagree with the decision, you can do an appeal. The biggest thing to remember when it comes to appeals is that they are all on a time, they have very, very strict time frames. And so if you miss those time frames, unfortunately, you cannot submit appeals. Um, you know, you can try to have a conversation with your instructor or your program head at that time, um, but for the most part, an appeal cannot be submitted if it is past the appropriate time frame. So the numbers to be mindful of are five days and 10 days. So five days to have informal conversations, and if you need to put an, a formal appeal, it would be 10 days from the date of the decision. Um, there are forms and there are processes, policies and procedures that you can find on the SAS Polytech website that explain to you how the appeal process is handled and it also provides you with the form. Um, it also tells you who you can reach out to for support. And so the advocates are here to provide support uh, for writing appeals, with appeal meetings, anything like that. Um, okay, what do I do if I want to appeal a grade? And so if you have been provided a grade that you disagree with, um, or you think, you know, maybe I did better, you can do a grade appeal. And so that goes um, back to your, whoever made the decision. So pr probably the first person is your instructor. Um, you provide that information to them uh, in an informal way. And then, and then the appeal process is kind of, um, goes on from there. They do a reassessment. If you disagree, you have some other opportunities to do it again. During appeals, we always try to handle it the most informal way possible. Um, it's important that, you know, you have these conversations so you can understand what happened. Um, you can get supports in place so that these mistakes don't happen again. And so again, library, learning services, um, counseling, accessibility services, if you feel like maybe you need an accommodation. And so all of these people who are here today are people who can support you if you are, if you find yourself in one of these positions. Um, I know that this is a lot of information when you're not already a student. <laughs> this is sort of just preparing you to understand that, um, you know, if you do find yourself in a position where you are being accused of academic misconduct, just so that you're aware that there's options for you. Uh, because a lot of time when you're in the position, you're feeling overwhelmed and, and some of these things you don't think of right away. Um, okay, so last question. Who can I talk to if I'm having issue with an instructor or a SAS Polytech faculty? And so the SPSA is a third party uh, association. So we are not actually um, SAS Polytech employees. And so a lot of times students um, may feel uncomfortable going to their instructor, to their program head, to their academic chair, whoever, uh, because they may feel worried about where that can put them uh, in with their academic standing. If I make a complaint, is there, you know, fear of retribution, right? And so um, we do at the SPSA, the advocates do take on any complaints regarding um, 
SAS Polytech instructors, faculty, staff, anyone within the SAS Polytech community. And we can provide support and guide you uh, as to who the best person would be to talk to. If you're having issues with a specific instructor, um, you know, if it's just regarding conduct, usually the person who, you know, we would discuss these conversations with is the program head um, or the academic chair. We would sort of try to have some informal conversations again, try to handle it the most informal way possible, um, you know, before filing any sort of harassment or conduct complaint. Um, a really important thing to note throughout all of these conversations is anytime you come to speak to an advocate, all of the conversations are confidential. And so we don't share any information with anybody else. Um, you may be working with other supports within the school. And so say you're working with Nina. Um, I wouldn't share with Nina that you have come to me. I wouldn't share with Heather that you've come to me um, unless you want us to be involved with each other and have conversation. And so we would uh, need to require consent before that um, with you connecting us. And then we would go ahead and have conversations as to how we can best support um, you to see academic success. Uh, if you just want to get some advice and you don't actually want any sort of intervention with the advocate, that is also fine as well. Um, we can provide any sort of policy or procedure advice and, and then you can handle it however you see fit. Um, again, we're just here to, to provide some assistance and advice and then it's the student's decision as to sort of how they want to handle um, the situation that they're in. So I do see there's a couple of questions in the chat. Sorry, I like sometimes talk a lot and don't stop. Don't so, apologize. That's why there's moderators <laughs> in here. Um, who can the student speak with regarding issues around discrimination, harassment, or racism? And so certainly that's something that the advocate can support the students with. Um, it depends who the other person is. And so if you're a student and you're feeling this way from, a, from another student, um, we do have our student relations department, and so I know that they are involved in uh, another orientation that will be coming up. I don't think they've done orientation yet, Kelsey, right? No, that'll be Thursday, the Thursday morning session at 9 a.m., the Healthy Minds and Bodies. Okay, awesome. So um, you'll meet them then, and they can definitely provide you with support throughout that. Um, the students always have access to have a support person in any sort of conversation or meetings they have at SAS Polytech. And so if you are having a meeting with student relations regarding, um, you know, you're feeling discriminated or there's harassment or racism, we can be there to support you within all of those conversations as well. And there are, um, if you are feeling as though this could potentially be a form of harassment, um, there is a procedure that takes place. Um, there's a process and there's a, a definitely a complaint um, form that you can fill out and um, you submit that through student relations. It goes to HR um, and depending on sort of where it falls, it might go through HR or it might go back within to the program and go to your academic chair. And so um, that's usually probably the best way is if it's student on student, if it is regarding somebody within faculty, um, again, the advocate can definitely support uh, the students in that process, and usually that goes back to the um, academic chair, and then depending, again, if, if, if it does meet harassment, that would go through HR, and there would be an investigation and, and so on for that as well. Um, okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, last word. Yeah, student relations. Oh, okay, yes. Thanks, Kelsey. <laughs> well, I would also want to make sure that, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and there's a lot of questions that I know will probably be asked to student relations on Thursday as well. There's sometimes that confusion of who do I go to for, it's just in the grand scheme of things, all of them are working for your best interests, right? So if you're, you know, if you go to student relations first and it ends up being an advocate issue, they will direct you that way and vice versa. If, Absolutely. If it, yeah, there's one big common theme to kind of take away from all of this is that no matter who you talk to on campus, they will direct you the right way. I know that seems obvious, but what's really nice about this, about SAS Polytech, but especially campus by campus is that everyone knows each other. Um, wow. It's very holistic, like everything really, everyone really works together very, very well. So you're never going to be steered in the wrong direction if you ask the wrong person 
there is no wrong person, right? They'll direct you where you need to go. So um, I know it's easier. So it seems obvious to just go, just ask, but you could even ask commissioners where to go if you're not sure about, you know, X, Y, Z, and they will, you know, we all know each other. So never be afraid to ask or feel like you're asking the wrong person because you're not. Awesome. Yeah. We I'm get totally out the ways between advocate, the advocates and student relations and things too. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. We're all just here to support the students and, and, you know, if we're not the right person, we'll definitely uh, forward you on to the right person. So I'm going to provide a couple links here uh, in the chat. So the first link is uh, the SPSA website, um, just the information regarding the advocates. It kind of gives um, a good breakdown of, of sort of the services that we provide and what we can uh, assist students with. And then I'm also going to attach here um, our YouTube video that talks about, uh, it just gives a little bit more description on the services that the advocate provides. Does anybody have any other questions regarding advocacy? I know that earlier today, Louie was here talking about um, some other SPSA stuff. So between him and I, hopefully we got it all covered, but if I'm here to answer any questions, if anyone may have. The SPSA is very like front and center in person. So like go say hi, chat with them. If you ever have questions, um, they're always very friendly, especially Laura. So oh, thank yeah, you. Regina or Moose John, you get to see her. She's wonderful. Chat her up. Today they were and giving Maddie away is our North advocate. Oh, sorry, Nina. I just said today they were giving away hot chocolate. I walked by there. So oh, yes. That's awesome. Where was my hot chocolate? Stress better. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Perfect. So does anyone else have any other questions for anyone in here? Or even if it's something that you might not even think is relevant. Um, we do have a little bit extra time just because uh, we didn't have one section there. Do you have free coffee on campus? I feel like that depends. I don't know that I can give. A we sometimes do at the library. It's not all the time. Um, and like I said, I just walked by SPSA and they had hot chocolate. Um, so it's really random. Um, we can't give away free coffee all the time, but we try to as often as we can because students seem to love that more than anything. So just walk around, talk to people, keep your eyes peeled, and you'll be able to find some somewhere. Yeah, so when there's generally when there's like an event, you mm -hmm. can probably assume that there's either popcorn or coffee or both. Um, if you see or smell popcorn, you will probably find me or you will find Leanne or whoever else because we have a popcorn machine at every campus that we like to take places. So coffee and coffee and popcorn, depending on the event, is usually around. Mm -hmm. Are public buses and taxis allowed on campus? Um, yeah, absolutely. There are there's public transit that comes to every single campus. Um, you just want to check based on what city you're going to be in, like what that schedule is. And taxis as well, absolutely. Oh gosh, yes. You know how many times I've had to Uber because my car died or whatever else? Oh yeah. They're able to come on campus. It's not like through campus. It's not like we, you know, that SAS Polytech has like a taxi company, but oh yeah, public transit is definitely, definitely a thing here. Oh yes, thank you, Laura. Here, Laura, do you, or I know Louis, I think sort of mentioned that earlier, but um, if you wanna add more on that, the transit passes. Yeah, you can you can purchase the transit passes on each campus, um, each at the SPSA offices. Most of the transit passes are discounted for students. Um, and so you can get discounted rates. You can, every campus will be different because like Regina, Moose Jaw, Saskatoon, PA, all of the, their transit are separate. And so um, it really depends where you are, depending on which type of pass you can purchase. Some you can just purchase a couple rides, some it would be a monthly pass. And so yeah, you can get those at the offices. Um, I also see a question here. Oh, I lost my chat. Uh... Oh, about parking on campus. So yes, there's parking on campus. Um, there are a million ways you can pay, but I would say the easiest way, and yes, you do have to pay for parking. Um, it's just kind of one of those things that's just hard to escape. 
The only exception I can kind of tell you, like I can tread lightly is in Moose Jaw, there is a lot of street parking, though it does depend, right? Um, it's just sort of first come first serve. That's really the only exception. But other than that, I definitely recommend using the Honk mobile app. Thank you, Leanne. Leanne just added a link in the chat about parking. But I know I think the easiest thing for most students is to use what's called the Honk mobile app. There is, and I'll be going way more into this tomorrow in our, um, in kind of the student orient or the, the website specific uh, or slash student engagement specific sessions. But Honk mobile, basically you can prepay you can like purchase a pass for a month or whatever else for various prices um you can also do like day passes and pay just from your phone so you don't have to go to the actual little you know little parking kiosk thing and pay uh there's a lot of options but um yeah please visit that link if you want to read more about it but yes parking yes you have to pay that's just i feel like that's one of those things like what are the um the the certainties of the world it's like death taxes and paying for parking <laughs> at, a, at a university or a school unfortunately another fun thing i want to add on as a benefit if you park on campus is for those of you who are new to saskatchewan if you haven't noticed yet it gets quite cold here and sometimes your car doesn't like that uh, i can tell you personally my car doesn't um so what you can actually each campus if you go to security they have booster packs so in case your car dies on you while you're on campus go to security ask for the booster pack and they will jump your car for you so you can get home oh thank you so much for adding that yeah because I, I don't know that anyone would have been able to say that in any other chat. So thank you. That saved me. I had a bad battery and it was like minus 40. Um, another time I had to Uber, I was saying, but no, the booster packs, it's great. You just get them loaned out. You sign it out and oh, it's the best. And again, I know that once again, sounds scary, but I promise you, this is a beautiful, wonderful province. Um, the winter being as rough as, as it is makes the rest of the year that much better because it's so beautiful the rest of the year. And it's still beautiful. It's just cold, right? But can't scare you off now. You're already enrolled. Well, I guess if you're not here yet, but <laughs> no take backsies. Oh, are there weekend classes or meetings? Typically, I don't know the answer to that one. I don't think there are, unless it's a special specialized program. Can someone help me with that? So I make sure I'm not totally. I'm only aware of like, yeah, like you said, link, which is English second language instruction happening on evenings and weekends. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to say no though, in case. Well, no, no, no. Cause like quite a few of our programs have like clinical rotations mm -hmm. or practicums and I don't know what they have for like weekend scheduling so your program heads your best bet talking to them yeah that's what I was going to say Heather like the clinicals those will fall like some of those shifts will fall on weekends but I haven't come across any scheduled classes that are over weekends but again I don't want to say no for sure there's such a diversity of programs and so many different things going on. We can't really answer anything. Yes or no, unfortunately. I know that's, that 90% of the time, that's the answer. It depends on the program, right? These are good questions though. It's, it's interesting because there are fewer people in these sessions, just this, the nature of the time of year compared to in the summer, but there's more questions, which is interesting, which no, no complaining here, but. Oh, don't apologize. You want clarification. Do you have limited passes for parking on campus? We say limited, like, what do you mean? Because there's like, there's different options, right? There's, a, you know, monthly passes. Um, and again, there's more on the site. I don't want to give any wrong information because um, I, need, I need to study up on my parking information because I just played with the Count mobile app on the like actual computer today and learned a lot. So there's a lot to learn, but um, I feel like that might depend on the campus as well. Like Saskatoon yeah. campus tends to have more limited parking, but they do also have some street parking. Um, Regina, I, we, I feel like we have a lot of student parking. 
um, with the passes. So yeah, it's kind of another moose jaw. I have never heard of them running out of passes. Moose Jaw has a lot of parking and there's student specific parking. So if uh, of like faculty have their own areas where we park and then also the other side you get with that one is it's not as advised because you can't guarantee it, but there's a lot of street parking nearby because it's in a very residential area. So you can often find, if you come early enough, you can find a spot on the side of the road. You just don't get plug in and you're not on campus. Yeah, I would say Moose Jaw is definitely the one, the one campus for sure you do not have to worry about parking because there's on and off. But yeah, I mean, in winter you can park on the road, on the side of the road, depending. Just Unless check for if they're plowing or not. Yeah. And that can be tricky, but. But I've never seen the parking lots in Moose Jaw full. Oh, Jose, that's a good question. Do you have to select the courses at my SAS Polytech or will you be getting it on January 3rd? Do you mean like what? Because our Jose, you're an international student, right? You're in the Dominican Republic. You should already be registered for your classes. That shouldn't even be something you have to worry about. You should already be registered. I know, I think you went over that with Emily today, right? Or do you mean, or do you mean like your schedule? Yeah, it's like the schedule because at the page I, I saw that there are options for you to select your courses or plan your, your days. Yeah, but... again, yeah. So again, when I know it's, it's all, it's all dependent, right? But generally speaking, when you're an international student, you are registered for all of your classes like automatically so just okay. disregard that basically yes that was what they say earlier yeah yeah i know it, okay. it gets confusing again it's there's never yeah. like a straight answer but um is there a clinic or health center on campus that is a great question um that is also something that we'll go over on thursday a little bit more so every single campus other than moose jaw right now has a health nurse on campus Moose Jaw is honestly amazing. I feel like this sounds <laughs> sounds bad to go other than Moose Jaw, but trust me, Moose Jaw is amazing. Hopefully that's happening soon. Um, but there's plenty of, you know, clinics in town. Miranda knows Moose Jaw better than I do. So I don't want to seem like I'm just, you know, saying things for no good reason. But, but yeah, no, there are, there are health clinics on all of them, but Moose Jaw. Anything else? Oh yeah, and going back to the first the first session, right? Once you have a, a SAS Health Card, which we I know we sent information about how to apply for that, you can yeah go to any clinic in the city for free. You're good, which is an ama amazing thing coming from. And I know I'm not far from Canada, but I'm from the states, and that was like a crazy thing for me that I just got a health card and don't have to pay at the doctor. Mind blowing. Come on, come on, USA. Anyway. Do we have any other questions? Because if not, you get a little bit of time back. Because I don't think we're going to go all the way till 4.30. Thank you, Leanne. Um, OK, you can see that you're registered for all of your classes on the portal, but you can't see the schedule. Will you receive it later? That information should be on your MySAS Polytech, finding your schedule. Am I wrong, Miranda? It will take a little bit for the schedule to be created, predominantly because that's a question of the instructors being assigned their classes and the spaces. So that'll come a little later, but keep an eye out for that. It will get updated as soon as it's up and ready. Thanks, Miranda. And I also like to always add, when in doubt, email your uh, program head. And if you're ever aware who that is, can you email student engagement like you can email anyone but student engagement is always what I like to throw out there because I'm not gonna I don't want to throw everyone else's out there for no good reason but um yeah you should, and once again I, I know I said this the first session if you were here please check your SAS Polytech emails please check your SAS Polytech emails not your personal emails not your hotmail your SAS Polytech email because if you're ever missing anything you're not sure why you didn't get it but you've been checking your gmail the whole time that is probably why. Everything gets sent to your SAS Polytech email. 
The follow-up that I send to this will be sent to the emails that registered for this, which I know include personal emails. So that's probably the only time you'll receive any, con any um, communication from me to your personal email. All right. Do we have anything else before we wrap it up? I know. Okay. okay. So where can you see your schedule? So again, it would be on your MySauce Polytech and then there's literally a link that says schedule or course schedule or something like that. Um, if it's not there yet, like Miranda said, it will be but that is where you would typically find it. I always say too, when in doubt, MySAS Polytech has pretty much everything you need to know there, pretty easy to access. But if you're not really sure how to navigate MySAS Polytech, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go to Getting Started Online Sessions with Heather <laughs> and she will show you. Perfect. Yeah, as Leanne said, watch that SAS Polytech email as much as you can. They'll tell you where to go on your first day and then give you your schedule that day. And if you're not sure where to go on your first day, that is ideally the job of us on the first day of classes. There will be ask me booths. We will have a list of where your classes are. You should be receiving that information anyway, but if for some reason you don't, you will not be you know, left to fend for yourself. I promise you that. Even when you just show up on campus, we'll, we'll make sure you get to where you need to go. Okay. Anything else? If not, you're welcome. Oh, yes. Thank you, Heather. She put in her registration link for getting started online. I know there's a lot of online stuff, but you know, that's the world we live in, right? What's one one positive that COVID-19 brought is that. We can do a lot online, pretty cool. So that's why we're, that's why this orientation series too, we have a bit of this as well as the in-person stuff because why not marry the two things that we are pretty good at at this point. So if you wanna go through this chat, sort of your last chance to get those links, if you wanna find anything specific though, I will be sending that follow-up email that has uh, all the necessary links that we've talked about. Okay, so I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Thank you all for being, every, everyone, speakers and students, thank you for being here. As I said in the first session, thank you for being proactive. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's daunting to do this, right? So the least we can do is make it a little bit easier getting in there, just knowing, knowing even if you have information that you may not need immediately, it's just nice to know. So you don't have to do that extra work when you're on campus. Okay, I'm gonna let you all go though. Have a lovely day. Hopefully I see you tomorrow and or Thursday. In total, I will be in four more sessions. So again, the two tomorrow, they're the same thing. Do not, do not come to both. You do not need to come to both. There's one at 9 a.m., one at uh, 3 p.m., just like we have today, except it will be specifically about navigating SAS, my, or navigating SAS Polytech website and some other um, you know, kind of settlement information. And then Thursday, we will have a session on healthy minds and bodies, which will have um, uh, fit and rec, so fitness and recreation, counseling, student relations, and campus safety and security. And then the afternoon session will be on career and employment services, which is pretty self-explanatory, and student awards. Is the campus pet friendly? Um, unless you have like a registered animal, like a service animal, no but we do have therapy dogs on there sometimes, but no, it's not like when you typically, um, unless it's a registered animal, you would not really be able to do that. Yeah, I think, I would imagine an emotional support animal was allowed on campus, no? I don't see why not. Can anyone sort of, anyone else know that for sure? It's a good question. That's something I can look into. Again, I, I don't see why not, but I can look into that. Yeah, you would probably need, that is something that accessibility, that's something that would have been um, potentially answered there. Uh, I think if you have a particular accommodation and you've registered through Accommodate, which again, that's information that can be found on the website, information I, I can't confidently give you a ton of, um, I believe that would be fine. But again, maybe email me that just so I remember and I can look into it and give you that information. Okay, Rashma? So that is a really good question. 
Yeah. I'm surprised I've like, I don't think I've ever been asked that. It's such a good question. Okay. On that note, I'm going to let you all go. Okay. You have a lovely afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time it is where you are. Stay warm or stay cool again, wherever you are. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Goodbye, everyone.